This is one of those days where you just gotta do what you gotta do. It's about 7 a.m. I am not feeling the farm work right now. I wanna lay down and like watch cartoons and drink orange juice or something, but no, I've got a thousand hens that need to be moved because they haven't moved in a while for a confluence of reasons that I'll explain later. But first, we're gonna fire up this bad boy. Don't particularly like that. It was a clear night overnight. It's a little overcast now, but uh, it's gonna mean the grass is pretty slick and it might make it a little bit difficult to pull that henmobile in this, which is the second lightest of the trucks I've got. All right, we gotta stop for a minute. in the road. Hey, buddy. All right. We're going to move you in the direction you were going. He's shy. I'll stick him right now. All right. And now go back to wait. First, we're taking a trip to our old quarantine field that you might remember from uh from last episodes or whatever i need to snatch something where is it there it is and i need that i need that in the truck and uh i might also want to snag a couple of these feeders off of here because there's a little more competition at the feeders at the main flock than i'd like so let's go grab some stuff got our cart and four feeders so that should be that should be enough that's another 20 those things are five feet long so that's 20 feet two sides that'll be 40 feet 40 more feet of space for all the new guys everybody should be happy now let's go do the work we're in the main field now as you can see uh we got to when we get there henmobile is right there that white thing we got to move their water over move the fences move the feeders um and then we have to pull the thing. The grass out here doesn't seem too wet. One of the reasons I like to do moves uh, when the sun is up, because this is a little later than I would normally do chores. Um, number one is because the hens get a little more active. They're not quite as like drowsy. Like, you know, they're like people when they wake up, they're not, you know, like really early in the morning, they're like, no. Uh, so you wait a little bit longer, they get a little more active, less likely they get, you know, run over, stuff like that. Uh, but second, it'll hopefully dry out some of the dew in that grass because even though it is a little bit wet out here it's um you know it's it's still virginia it's hot it's also humid which ain't great but whatever and as i'm looking at these guys looks like somebody pushed the door open because everybody's out that's going to make this really interesting just out here waiting for me see if combs uh, that's why that looks like it came down overnight somehow. So that little hole is enough for This is probably about 80% of them Not the end of the world. This is gonna be chaos anyway because this is the first move for mo Like maybe half of these guys not most of them. So Whatever doesn't matter. We're gonna get to work We're gonna start by Dragging this float valve out behind the truck And we're just gonna move it over out of the way for right now actually I think we're gonna have the water be in the back of the paddock this time instead of the front just to mix things up this is probably too far uh, we will stick it here this is good enough all right next we're gonna offload the stuff off the truck and move the fences move the feeders so as you can see they went ahead and uh, knock down the fence for me again it's fine it's gonna happen anyway let's get this thing moved so all the new guys run around all over the place and try to figure out life let's talk a little bit about this paddock move so you see the ground this is uh not the way i'd like it to be they've been here for about two and a half weeks which is uh, about one and a half times longer than I would normally have them be. The issue is we had new hens get introduced here from the quarantine area back that way. 
So doing a move while you're still introducing new hens, while they're still trying to like not sleep in there and just like sleep in clusters all over the ground and stuff is not going to be fun. Like it's just that those moves would not work. So I wanted to give them a week so they started roosting in there by themselves, which means they see that is home. So no matter how far they kind of F off to in this field, they're still gonna know that this is where safety is. This is where the nests are. This is where the roosts are. So they're always gonna come back. So now that that's established, uh, we can still move, or we can move rather. Um, so this is a little more worn out than I'd like it to be, but if you get down close, um, you can see these crowns are scratched up, but the ground cover is still there. There's no bare soil, which is the important thing. We still have a mulch here. So this will recover just fine. We're using the gorilla cart over here to move their feeders over. Take off any unnecessary stress and work that we don't have to do with our backs. So. Yeah, stay there. Excuse me. Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. One more. Is that done? These guys are really hungry, which is good. That's going to once I start dumping feed for them, they're just gonna come right on and get right. I think that's all the feeders. I'm gonna put these in a line here and then come back, get the buckets and then get feed in it. So now the feeders are out here. Um, I'm gonna call a little bit of an audible here since they're all out, this is a little more unruly. Normally I only let down part of the fence to let them through. But now since we've got feeders here and there's a bunch of guys hanging out in here, they're gonna to wanna to try to go right through that fence and it's gonna frustrate their ability to get to the new paddock. So we're gonna take the rest of this down. We're gonna feed them last. So we're gonna move this, this thing first. Then we're gonna feed them so that in one big rush, everybody just kinda of goes that way. Let's see how that works out. The most important thing in moving this big thing with that little truck is to make sure that you are perfectly dead straight on. If you're trying to pull this thing and start at an angle, it's just gonna spin, it's not gonna move. So it might take a couple of tries to get this right, but let's do it. All right, I've got this thing in four low. I am heading, I think, pretty much dead away from it. So we're going to gently first get tension on the chain. All right, got that. Now we're going to try to gently apply the gas. This thing usually takes off at about 1.4 thousand RPMs. And you want to gently get the power there. It's not very gentle. That was a, that's a negative. Try again. Oh, look at that. We're going. We're going. And now that we're going, we really can't stop. So, yeah, looks like everybody's out of the way. Actually behaving pretty well, considering they're all new and kind of stupid. I'm like, oh shit, I stopped. We got it past the fence line. Uh, probably took it a little deeper than I wanted, but whatever. Uh, everybody is real freaked out now. So we're gonna bring some feed buckets over to them. We'll get a little feeding frenzy going on here. <clears throat> Hopefully get everybody back in the side, then uh, take down that fence. And then the last thing will be the rodeo, which is the fun part. Okay, so we're disconnecting the chain from the truck, getting that behind the fence line do that in three little sections. This one here, 
toss that one out of the way there. All right, so we've got now that one stood up. I don't know if you can really see it, but that fence over there is stood up. The back there is open. Most of them are starting to mill around this way. Uh, we got we got a bunch this way, but they'll come they'll come hither once I get the truck out of the way and once I get the feed in here. As we move the truck, move slowly, hit the horn. They're not very smart. They like to start to roost under your under your undercarriage, and you're gonna have a bad time. Okay, so as you can kind of see, most of everybody is in here at the feeding frenzy. Just a few stragglers out here. We got a special way of dealing with them and a handful of guys out here. That is our secret weapon, the Superman cake. All right, we've got 99% of everybody in now. Get their float valve back set up. I'm gonna go catch some stragglers and then grab whatever eggs are over here, clean up a little bit, and then I think that's it. One of my old home birds. I'm gonna have to catch you with the net. Ugh. All right, boy. Probably hard to see, but the back area there is all cleaned up. I got a. Uh, got 35 36 eggs or so um we'll do one final walk around and we can go home this thing is actually bowed a little bit because it's sitting like part of it's uphill part of it's downhill that's why i was having trouble moving it but it moved that is inside here good they found the main water Got these fellas in here Got one guy on the outside. It's one of the new ones. This is going to be difficult. Hopefully he'll just jump into the net. Okay. That was about an hour and 35 minutes all in, I think. Not bad, considering that they were all out already and half of them have never moved before. So... I ain't, I ain't mad at that. So I'm gonna take my sweaty behind home and get me a big old glass of sweet tea. Y'all be good now. <laughs>